Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's August 18th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. As always, first things first this week, let's take a look at the stock market briefly, which has been up and down quite a bit this week, but specifically, let's take a look at five of the highest traded stocks currently within the industry. As of this morning, August 18, 2023, BP has been trading at a volume of 32,663. Chevron Core is at a volume of 14,183. Dominion Energy has been trading at a volume of 3,698. Enbridge Incorporated is at 3,628. And Atlantica Sustainable has been trading at a volume of 985. But moving over to the news, the Environmental Protection Agency is releasing the first set of data collected under the fifth Unregulated Contaminant Monitoring Rule, otherwise known as UCMR5. As previously outlined under the EPA's PFAS Strategy Roadmap, UCMR5 will provide data that will improve the EPA's understanding of the frequency of 29 separate PFAS compounds as well as lithium and how often they are found in the nation's drinking water system and at what levels. The monitoring data on PFAS and lithium will help the agency make determinations about future actions to protect public health under the Safe Drinking Water Act. The data collected under UCMR5 will ensure science-based decision-making and help the EPA better understand national-level exposure to these 29 different compounds in addition to lithium and whether they disproportionately impact communities with environmental justice concerns. This initial data release represents approximately 7% of the total results the EPA expects to receive over the next three years. Radica Fox, the assistant administrator for water, said, quote, PFAS are an urgent public health issue facing people and communities across the nation. The latest science is clear. Exposure to certain PFAS, also known as forever chemicals, over long periods of time, is linked to significant health risks. That's why the Biden-Harris administration is leading a whole-of-government approach to address these harmful chemicals. As part of this commitment, the EPA is conducting the most comprehensive comprehensive monitoring effort for PFAS ever at every large and mid-sized public water system in America and at hundreds of smaller water systems, end quote. But moving out to Arizona, Yuma is now home to one of the nation's first solar panel recycling plants. As thousands of panels are decommissioned, We Recycle Solar is working to reduce the carbon footprint of solar panel waste. The company's CEO, Adam Sackey, says it's primarily the glass and metals that get reused from the panels. He says a typical solar panel lasts 20 to 30 years, and it's about finding new life for the panels to keep solar sustainable, saying, quote, eventually you get down to the raw 70% of the panel, which is glass. That basically gets ground up and separated from the other metals. Basically, you have all these commodities that can be put back into the marketplace. I hate to say this, but 90% of solar panels end up in the landfills, and that's because it costs a lot less to go to the landfill. End quote. But going into the world of acquisitions, Sims Metal, a global leader in metal recycling, announced this past week the company has agreed to acquire the assets of U.S.-based metal recycler Baltimore Scrap Corps and its affiliated entities. The acquisition is anticipated to close in October 2023, subjected to the satisfaction or waiver of customary closing conditions, including required regulatory approvals. BSC is one of the largest metal recyclers in the American Northeast with 17 facilities across five states, being that Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, with sales volumes of approximately 600,000 tons per year. BSC's operations include four shredders and extensive rail, barge, and port infrastructures, and the business is well-positioned with attractive proximity to both growing domestic demand markets and export. Total consideration for the acquisition is approximately $177 million U.S., plus working capital and other adjustments to be determined at closing. 
And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, proud sponsor of the PFL Featherweight Playoffs this coming Wednesday at Madison Square Garden live on ESPN. Make sure to reach out to Diamond Scientific online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And it's time to hit some of these local headlines. First up, in Missouri, Vision RNG announced this past week that its landfill gas to renewable natural gas project at Meridian Wastes Eagle Ridge Landfill in Bowling Green, Missouri, is now fully operational. The plant expects to produce approximately 375,000 MMBTUs of RNG annually, which is enough renewable natural gas to heat approximately 8,800 homes per year. Now moving to Ohio, Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther and the Department of Public Service announced this past week at a ribbon-cutting ceremony, residents now may use three new drop-off locations that collect food waste for composting. The facilities aim to help decrease the nearly 1 million pounds of food waste dumped at the Franklin County Sanitary Landfill every day. The city pilot program allows residents to dispose of food scraps at no charge at collection facilities located at the Anheuser-Busch Sports Park on Olentangy Road, the Dodge Park and Community Center on Sullivan Avenue, and the Scioto Southland Park on Parsons Avenue. And in Iowa, the Iowa County Landfill has launched a pilot textile recycling program for clothes and shoes. Items do not have to be in good condition, but they must be clean and dry. The landfill started this program to increase access to textile recycling in the county and prevent more valuable material from entering the landfill. Approximately 5% of waste in Iowa's landfills is textiles, according to the 2022 Iowa Waste Characterization Study. In Iowa County, that could be up to 500 tons or 1 million pounds of textiles in just one year, taking up valuable space in the landfill. Textile recycling not only saves landfill space, but also gives clothes and shoes a chance to be used by another person. Now moving to North Carolina, Greensboro residents will soon receive personalized feedback to help them recycle correctly. Building on previous cart audit campaigns, which reduced recycling contamination by 30% over the past three years, the city of Greensboro is using a mobile audit tool powered by Prairie Robotics to identify recycling trends and provide custom-designed educational materials to residents. Auditors in the field will use the mobile auditing device to identify and photograph contamination in recycling carts. This system will generate an educational postcard with a photo of the contamination and information about what items are not recyclable under Greensboro's program. The postcard will then be automatically mailed to the resident. And lastly, moving back to Baltimore for just a moment, the Baltimore County Department of Public Works and Transportation announced the expansion of Baltimore County's electronics recycling program under a new partnership with a leading electronics recycling firm, Securus. The partnership allows the county to accept a more comprehensive range of electronics, including several harder-to-recycle items, such as CRT televisions that contain leaded glass, hard drives, and flat-screen monitors. A Baltimore County executive said, quote, This expansion reinforces our ongoing commitment to environmental health in Baltimore County and ensures that these complex waste products are kept out of our landfills and recycled responsibly and efficiently. End quote. And that has been your August 18, 2023 Recyclist Update brought to you by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next Friday for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.